morning, everyone. I would like to call this meeting to order. Thank you for joining us during our weekly virtual MLS breakfast meeting. My name is Shun Zhang from VMAX My Home, and I'm your November MLS uh, program chair. A little bit about me. I grew up in Boston and moved to Southern California 20 years ago. Graduated with hotel management at the University of New Hampshire. At the same time, I was studying commercial real estate, but end up specializing in residential, and I really enjoy it. I am a member of Western Yuba Valley Realtors since 2009 and been in the industry over 15 years. And currently I am with Remax My Home. A few housekeeping tips. All participants will be muted upon entry to the MLS breakfast meeting. And should you have a question or a comment, please remember to enter it into the chat box. Please remember to join us weekly as, our, as we have our virtual MLS breakfast meeting every Thursday at 9 a.m. As always, this meeting is being recorded and will be available online on our YouTube channel, West Singapore Valley Realtors. Please remember to follow WSGVR social media on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can also watch all our pre-recorded video on, you, on YouTube. Make sure and subscribe to West WSGVR. Text message service to get the latest information. Text WSGVR to number 72727. The CR MLS quick tips. Please add membership at WS gvar.com and info at wsgvar.com as an email contact adding it into your email contact account as a contact is to ensure your email go right into your inbox and are not marked as spam this is very important so please add that in as soon as possible you do not want to miss any of the emails. Today's agenda consists of our affiliate spotlight, Sage Gomez and Brendan Sareski, followed by Mindy Ye with our president message, and then our guest speaker, Karen Carrera. Just a reminder that to be eligible, eligible for today's prices, you must be a WSGVR member and your name must be displayed to win. No telephone number will be accepted. Affiliate Spotlight and Introduction will be brought to you by the Affiliate Committee, Chair Sage Gomez and Vice Chair Brendan Sariski. The floor is yours, Sage and Brendan. Okay, okay. sorry, Thank you're good. You I was waiting for him to unmute me. All okay. right. Good morning, everyone. I just wanted to take this time to say how thankful I am to have been your affiliate chair for this year. We've all had to navigate transitioning to Zoom and now transitioning somewhat back to person. So although we weren't able to see each other this year, I just wanted to say thank you to the Weston Gabriel family for making this board the best board that I've been a part of. This is actually the first board that I joined. And not only did everyone welcome me with open arms, but I have made long lasting relationships very quickly. From the affiliates who saw me, new and timid, and helped me to meet new people, specifically Sandy Franco and Mark Wu, they're the first affiliates I met. They took me under their wing, so thank you to Mark Wu and Sandy Franco. Mm -hmm. And the realtors who made me feel so comfortable and always invited me to join their tables or the conversations. So thank you to everyone. It's been a difficult year, but I am very grateful to have this West St. Gabriel family to lean on. I also wanted to take the time to recognize the families who have suffered from COVID this year and those who have lost family members from COVID. I also wanted to say a big thank you to Mindy Ye for asking me to be the affiliate chair this year and trusting me with this position and always being there, not only as my colleague, but as my friend as well. So thank you, Mindy A. Um, we also wanted to recognize Nanette Ong for putting together and editing all the videos for the special events committee and Joe Haggerty as well 
for editing all of the affiliate videos. So without further ado, I'd like to pass the torch of the affiliate chair to my vice chair, Brandon Saransky. He and I had to figure out how to be the chairs via Zoom, and we so wish that we could have been in person. However, life had other plans for all of us. I'm so grateful to have had Brandon with me this whole year. He's been my rock and my partner throughout this whole year. So I don't know what I would have done without you, Brandon. So thank you. And you know what's funny too, is that we're technically competitors, <laughs> but he's one of my great friends now. And I, I love you, Brandon. You're amazing. So thank you for being here for me. And I just know he's going to do an amazing job this year as your guys' affiliate chair. So here's to you, Brandon. Let me pass the torch. If this was lit, I'd be passing the torch to you. <laughs> Thank you, Sage. I guess I'll unofficially pass the torch to me. <laughs> um, I definitely want to echo everything that Sage said. This was definitely a very challenging year for all of us. And to be able to um, do so many amazing programs and all the thanks to everybody who helps make that happen and make that possible. I am beyond appreciative of being able to do this with Sage this year. And like she said, we are competitors, but um, we found commonality and camaraderie, especially around this year, not being able to see each other in person. This has definitely been one of those years that challenges all of us and I am beyond grateful to have been vice chair this year and to learn a lot of things um, from this year because of the circumstances. And I'm also very excited for next year. Um, now that we get to come back in person and get to see everybody, I'm super excited um, to, to really start the year off strong and for all of us to be able to, you know, take what we learned this year and take it into the future. And as we say, and has been the central theme of the entire year. It's been the new normal. And so as we start these hybrid, you know, meetings coming up, um, I'm looking forward to um, also being able to do this with my new vice chair, which will be um, Joseph Nguyen. So I'm excited to bring Joseph on to the uh, affiliate chair and vice chair positions and to work with him this next year to bring to you all um, an amazing year of great education and a lot of personal touches with those affiliate spotlights. I hope you guys have enjoyed that, getting to learn a little bit more about the affiliates. And um, thank you, Sage, again, for everything this year. And I really have enjoyed everything. And um, thank you, everyone. And I hope everyone has a fantastic Thanksgiving. Thank you, Sage and um, Brendan. We now have the affiliate introduction as always, uh, to support our affiliate with your transactions. First one, we have John Wax from Snap NHD. He was here. I, I don't know where he went. Yeah, he's still here. I saw him. I, I am muted him. He's Snap. Uh, he doesn't have John anymore. <clears throat> he's Snap NHD. John, could you unmute yourself? Thank you. Thank you. I've tried that. I, I unmuted, then I muted, and then I'm unmuted. Okay, great. Good morning, everyone. John Wax with. Snap NHD, Natural Health <coughs> Disclosures, NHD, uh, and I'm here for you. Um, I'm wishing you and all your families a safe, healthy, and fun Thanksgiving. Thank you. Thank you, John. Next, we have Judy Chu from AAA Capital. Yes, this is Judy Chu from AAA Capital Lending, Senior Loan Officer. I speak Chinese and English, and I wish everyone a great, great Thanksgiving. Thank you. Next, Mark Wu from Allstate Insurance. Good morning, everybody. Mark Wu with Allstate Insurance for your property insurance needs. I am very grateful to be a part of this board for over 20 years and to be able to establish all these great relationships I've had with many of you. Have a fabulous Thanksgiving with your family and friends. Okay, Nancy Chan, lawyer's title, please. Good morning, everybody. Wes and Gilbert Association family. Uh, I want to wish you a very, very wonderful Thanksgiving. This is Nancy Chan. I've been here for over 30 some years and I love every one of you. Thank you so much for all your support, Nancy Chan, lawyer's title. Thank you again. Thank you, Nancy. Angie Tang, first American title. Thank you, Shan. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, WF 
WSGB. This is Angie, First American Title, wanting to wish you and your family a very, very happy Thanksgiving. Thank you guys so much for all the support and um, wish you guys well. Thank you, Angie. Next one, Cosmo Sanchez from New Aim, New Aim Funding. Sorry. Good morning, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. I wish you a happy Thanksgiving with you and your family. I want to give a special shout out and thank you to Sage and Brandon. I was vice president, vice chair of um, the affiliates last year, and it's a lot of work behind the scenes, guys. So I definitely appreciate them too. Thank you so much. Thank you, Cosmo. We are now happy to introduce open pitching to our virtual MLS breakfast meeting. Today, we have a listing from Robert Hernandez with VMAX My Home. Robert, the floor is yours. Hi, good morning. This is Nanette Ong pitching for Robert Hernandez oh. of VMAX. This duplex uh, is on 5123 and 5125 Navarro Street in El Sereno. And it's done on R3 with the possibility of developing an extra dwelling in the back. The lot is about 5,000 square feet on flat land. Sellers are highly motivated and will entertain all reasonable offers. Offers are subject to interior inspection due to units being tenant occupied. With the right offer price, sellers will offer a credit for evictions. Thank you. Thank you, Nanette. Thank you. Now, please help me welcome our 2021 President Mindy Ye. Go ahead, Mindy, the floor is yours. Thank you, Sean. I had to unmute myself. <laughs> Good morning, WSGV, our family and friends. I would like to wish all of you a happy Thanksgiving next week. We are very grateful and blessed for your loyal membership to WSGVR. I attended the NAR annual conference conference and expo, expo last week and just came back a couple of days ago from San Diego. There was a lot of information that was covered, but in the interest of time, and I, I don't want to steal Karen Herrera, uh, Gat's presentation, I'm just going to share a couple of very important information to all of you. During the NAR Board of Directors meeting held this past Monday, um, from the Professional Standards Committee recommendation to amend the Code of Ethics and Arbitration Menu to provide guidance for virtual ethics and arbitration hearing. So the motion was passed by the Board of Directors uh, 770, 717 yes votes. Mm -hmm. So, and then another amendment for standard of practice 12.1 to clearly prohibit members from advertising their services as free. Realtors must not represent that the brokerage service to a client or customers are free or available at no cost to their clients. A list of realtor will receive no financial compensation from any source of those services. Um, the rationale behind that is as part of ongoing efforts to re review and update the code of ethics, to ensure adequate protection of consumers, clarity in, in requirements and in legal defensibilities. Mm -hmm. NAR legal counsel recommends that standard of practice 12.1 be amended to clearly align with the Department of Justice. The DOJ requests that NAR prohibits members from advertising their services as free. So the motion was passed by 716 votes from the board of directors. There was 23 no votes. So that's all the update I have. I thought that was very important. I have a booklet of 170 pages, so I don't want to put you guys to sleep. <laughs> but um, uh, That's all I have. Uh, Shan, back to you. Thank you, Mindy. Thank you. Now let's welcome our guest speaker, Karen Herrera, Government Affairs Director. Karen Herrera is a retired local government official with over 34 years of service, most recently serving as a deputy city manager and public information officer for the city of Duwati. Her forward thinking can do attitude has enabled her to hold a variety of executive positions during a career that spanned five different cities, including assistant city manager, deputy city manager, 
administrative services director and senior assistant to the city manager. Her in-depth knowledge of government and vast professional network has also facilitated the accomplishment of countless out-of-the-box projects during her career, including generated over 1 million in community grants, implemented eco-friendly brush clearance program to minimize exposure exposed to fire wildfires, launched and maintained websites, social media platforms, i.e. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Hootsuite, constant contacts, etc., and handling crisis communications, media relations for challenging situations, including wildfires, mudslides, and gang violence. Let's welcome Karen Herrera. Thank you, Karen. The floor is yours. Thank you, Sharon, for that wonderful introduction and good morning, Association. I'm so happy to be here and be a part of your wonderful family and group. I just want to take a moment at the beginning of my presentation to thank everybody for the warm welcome that you have bestowed upon me since I started at the beginning of September. I know this year has, well, longer than a year has not been an easy time for any of us. And um, I've thought about many of you many times. Um, I just wanna say again, thank you for welcoming me, especially during this challenging time in our country's history, um, especially um, also during this week before Thanksgiving, we have a lot to be thankful for and um, I'm thankful for you guys, thank you. But with today's presentation, let's go ahead and if we can start showing my slides. Great, okay, today's presentation is gonna focus on a couple of key areas. First of all, like Mindy was saying, um, we were at the recent National Association of Realtor Conference in San Diego. Also, I wanted to speak to you a little bit about our local priorities and some of our member interests, as well as some upcoming um, social and educational events that we are thinking about bringing to the association. So if I could have the next slide. Great. Um, again, the um, National Association Conference down in San Diego, first conference in two years for the group. Um, many of you know the National Association has over 1.5 million members of the Realtor Party. Um, the conference was approximately six days long. Uh, there was over 10,000 attendees. Um, it was unbelievable how many different sessions were offered. Um, how many caucuses were held and board meetings were held. For me, it was a great first time experience to meet governmental affairs directors or government affairs directors from all over the country, as well as many of the local uh, GADs. It was also amazing to see the types of speakers that uh, attend this organization's conference. Very impressive speakers, including some celebrity types, including Simone Biles and Drew Brees. So um, it was also a great time to get to know the um, NAR staff. Um, that organization has such a wealth of resources and knowledge, and it was a great opportunity to get to know them so that I can help uh, guide some of those resources back to our association and take advantage of some of those wonderful programs. Next slide, please. And just hit the button one more time, Balin. There we go. Um, the challenges affecting our industry on the federal level are very consistent with what's happening on the local level. Affordable housing, lack of uh, inventory, and tax increases that could affect the sale of property were two overriding themes at the conference this year. Next slide, please. Most of you know this past week, um, the country in general scored a huge bipartisan victory when both sides of the aisle were able to come together and pass the $1 trillion infrastructure bill that was actually signed into law this past Monday. The law, as you know, is gonna focus on badly needed road repairs, bridge repairs, and also major broadband expansion. It also for California is going to be quite a windfall. 25 billion for highways, 4 billion for bridge repair and improvements almost 10 billion for public transit projects, and 100 million for improved broadband across the state, uh, especially in those areas where there is no broadband available. 
Now the challenge, um, now that that big challenge is behind us, comes the social infrastructure bill or the Build Back um, Better Act, um, which is at this point approximately 1.75 trillion. Um, and unlike the traditional infrastructure bill that I just described, this one is going to include some much needed investment in housing. And at the conference, they talked a lot about that. Some of the highlights that are currently in the program and NAR was vital in keeping these components in were things like a um, down payment program for first generation um, homeowners. Also state and local government grants for affordable housing, increased capital investment for public housing, low income tax credits for homeowners, and new incentives for lenders to offer mortgages with smaller down payments. Um, in addition to all these housing elements, this uh, Build Back Better uh, Act uh, also takes into consideration probably some of the things you've heard about more are things like reduce prescription drug costs, extending child tax credits, uh, universal preschool and other um, ideas such as that. Also in the housing, the affordable housing arena, there's a lot of uh, talk at the federal level, well, not only talk, but action um, on regulatory issues. There's a lot of changes that are happening on that front. Um, the easing of the historic pandemic support, pulling back on eviction moratoriums, allowing REOs back to the market with an emphasis on, home, on individual home ownership and increasing the offer period for owner occupants um, from 20 days to 30 days. So that for those first 30 days, the emphasis is really on people who are gonna move into that home and live there versus it becoming another investor owned property. Fair lending and access is also uh, a big um, topic at the federal level, especially um, expanding opportunities to people who have not traditionally received it before in the housing market. Again, the emphasis on improving opportunities, not lowering standards. They really wanna make sure that credit worthy folks from all different backgrounds will be able to get financing. They talked a lot about different segments of our population that although are credit worthy, for whatever reason are not entering the housing market. And they really are asking the questions as to why and how to better work with those populations and get them into homes. They also talked a lot about the housing supply, um, particularly the Neighborhood Homes Investment Act. Um, this act would do two things if it stays in this particular bill. It would lower the cost for developers to build multifamily homes, which is an area that really needs um, more investment, not only here in California, but all over the country. It, would all, it also has another interesting aspect um, for homeowners in low income areas, um, allowing them to actually get low interest loans to reinvest in maybe a property that is decaying and they haven't been able to take out a home equity loan for a variety of reasons. And what they're seeing that could do, if in these neighborhoods, individuals are able to rehabilitate their homes one by one by one, as a whole, the neighborhood value rises and it's good for the property owners, it's good for the community all around. So that's also um, a part of the um, Build Back Better bill. Um, can we go to the next slide? All right, another area of concern, as I mentioned right off the bat, are taxes and tax increases. We just talked about the housing aspects of the social infrastructure bill, which would benefit many realtors and brokers as well as Americans in general. However, um, and the Democrats right now, as you know, do control Congress. However, there are several more conservative, moderate members of the party, Kristen Sinema, Joe Manchin, who are very, very concerned about this bill adding to, dramatically adding to the national debt. And they wanna make sure that it doesn't. And of course, um, NAR is very concerned about taxes, you know, taxes paying for this, and taxes that could potentially hurt property owners or property transactions. Initially, 
the uh, social infrastructure bill. I'm sure you guys heard numbers of three plus trillion. And when that was on the table, uh, there were going to be some hefty tax increases to pay for this uh, new social infrastructure. For example, things such as uh, things that uh, the National Association of Realtors is very much against and worked hard to remove from the bill, and they were successful. But I'll just mention a couple of the areas where they were successful. There was talk about eliminating the 1031 exchange. They were successful in keeping that in. There was talk of much higher capital gains. They were successful in defeating that. There was also talk of um, the IRS being able to monitor every transaction in every bank account over the amount of $600 to make sure that the government was not missing taxes or tax opportunities, what have you. That was also removed um, from the bill. Thus, how will this social infrastructure be paid for? Democratic leaders in the White House insist the bill will be fully paid for by a 15% minimum tax on corporate profits that large corporations report to shareholders. The White House also estimates the bill will raise $400 billion from increased IRS enforcement to collect unpaid taxes, which would be the, make up the largest source of revenue for the legislation. Also, unlike the other infrastructure bill, the Democrats will probably be passing this one by their party only by bringing together their moderate and their progressive caucuses and then getting it through the Senate um, using the rec budget reconciliation process. Ideally, um, the president and uh, Nancy Pelosi have been saying that they want to take a vote on this social infrastructure bill before um, Thanksgiving. So we'll just stay tuned and keep watching on that. There was another area um, in terms of taxes that got a lot of discussion at the conference as well, and that was on um, the SALT reduction. Um, back in the 2017 tax reform package, um, the mortgage deduction was lowered to $10,000 maximum. This new um, way of, well, if if things go the way uh, the National Association would like, and they're working both sides of the aisle to make sure that this is included in the social infrastructure bill, it would raise that SALT uh, minimum to $80,000, far cry from the $10,000. This especially benefits states like California and like New York, where property values are so high. As I said, there's a lot of talk about this on both sides of the aisle, and they feel very confident that this could get through if the Build Back America bill does get through. Could we go to the next slide, please? Great. Um, while I was at the conference, there were a lot of resources, as I had mentioned earlier in my discussion, that the National Association offers to us that I just wanted to take a moment and bring your attention to. Um, their Common Ground publication comes out on a quarterly basis. And this particular um, publication is very interesting. This current issue talks about affordable housing, but in general, it talks about smooth, smart growth, community design, just in general, and different examples of it all throughout our country, which can help shape local discussions here in our own backyard. Also, it talked about since election years next year, for many of our um, local cities, they'll all be having uh, elections for city council, um, so, some in March, some in November. Um, and as part of that, the National Association offers a very robust candidate training academy for state and local officials. And um, I'm working with our staff right now to actually get a link for the virtual course on that for those members that might be interested in running for local office. And also the National Association does offer in-person training opportunities too. So I'll, I'll keep my eye on that as well. They also talked a lot about how important it is um, in our growing, in this world of growing competition to realtors um, with Redfin and companies like that, that no one can tell our story better than us um, as to the value of realtors in today's world and always. Um, so what the association did is build out a nice web page in their um, on their website that really talks about the power of the MLS, 
um, what people, the value that realtors bring to a um, transaction. It talks more about um, just things that are important that we really need to work hard getting that word out in the community and always reminding folks about the value that realtors bring um, to transactions, to the community, and just in general. And as I mentioned, nobody can tell the story better than us. And this particular web page has a very powerful um, FAQ section. So I just wanted to bring that to our attention too and hopefully get that um, web page uh, as a quick link on our page so that all of these resources will be um, at your fingertips because the NAR's website is quite large and i um, not saying difficult to navigate, but just lots of information. So these are some things that I, I'd like to call your attention to um, right off the bat and easily. Also, I was really impressed with the amount of grant opportunities that the association offers. Um, issues mobilization, com consumer advocacy, housing opportunity. It allows us um, not only to work on issue mobilization, which I'll talk a little bit about later, but also bring in speakers on issues that are of interest and educate our members on um, pressing interests, areas of interest. So um, I will definitely be watching those and taking advantage of those opportunities for us as well. May I have the next slide? It was also very interesting um, to learn that the national priorities and our local priorities are really in sync. The things that we are concerned about on a local level, that the National Association is concerned about as well. I did want to bring to your attention, and many of you probably already know this, but every year shortly before the conference, they do a robust survey of members, of GADs, of association CEOs to find out what are folks concerned about. And again, the local priorities lined right up with uh, what the national priorities were. And um, I just, again, want to bring this to your attention to make sure that next year, if you didn't this year, take part in that survey and let your voice be heard. Very important, very important. But in terms of our local association priorities, it, again, you'll see a lot of similarities, housing affordability, um, rentals, short terms and evictions. A local governments, regulations, ordinance, council elections, housing elements, and of course, tax increases, which we just talked about in detail. Uh, next slide, please. So I wanted to take a minute and talk to you about some of the exciting upcoming events that uh, I'll be working with, uh, with your staff here at the West San Gabriel Valley Realtors Association. Um, the first one we're working with, CAR, and I believe the Arcadia Board of Realtors, um, of Realtors, on bringing assembly member um, Ed Chow um, to a hybrid format meeting. Um, our association would actually host uh, assembly member Chow in our conference room, and then folks would have the ability to zoom in as well and participate in the discussion. Um, no date has been set for it as of yet, but we are working out with the various uh, parties to uh, bring that to the association. We recently had a great meet and greet with State Senator Susan Rubio on November 2nd that Carr helped facilitate for us. It was a great opportunity for our members, uh, especially on our ledge committee and our board of directors, to get to know the state senator a little bit better and to also thank her for her work on AB 263, implicit bias training, which um, many of you have probably already taken part in or are planning on taking part in since it is now a law. Additionally, I'm working with the chambers of Alhambra, San Gabriel, Greater Mon uh, Monterey Park, and Rosemead. We have come up with a mixer for next year, a St. Patrick's Day mixer, March 17th at our association headquarters. And it's gonna be combined with an educational component. Um, from 5 to 5.45, we are going to be doing an educational seminar on SB9 and SB10. Um, and I'm not sure who the speaker is going to be yet, but I can tell you this. Um, the South Bay Association has just received a large uh, national grant to come up with an educational 
um, program on SB9 and SB10 um, for associations, members, as well as for local cities that so that everybody can understand the benefits of this, uh, these newly passed laws. So we're going to start the evening off with that, and then we're going to move into um, a nice mixer with a 50-50 uh, raffle that will benefit a, um, actually it will benefit Operation Gratitude, who will be sponsoring Memorial Day baskets for active and reserve military. So this is going to be a great event, and I'd like you all to mark your calendars and make sure you come. We're also going to be working with the Citrus Valley Association key contacts, as well as NFPCs, as well as our own key contact, on co-hosting a state and federal forum this spring. Um, it would include our Congress members Judy Chu, Grace Napolitano, as well as State Senator Rubio and Assembly Member Ed Chow. Again, it takes a while to coordinate everyone's calendars, but we will have more information upcoming to you on that very special event. Next slide, please. Okay, now let's get down to some of um, our member interests. Since I've been with the association, several uh, members have brought um, different, um, different topics up to me. And I wanted to just take a moment and uh, go over some of these uh, very quickly with you. Los Angeles County has uh, passed as of August um, or directed staff to come back. It was supposed to be in November, but it probably will not be with a draft um, TOPA ordinance. Um, this is of concern to the whole uh, LA County area, especially to the GADs and the associations. So as a result of that, several of the LA County GADs, including myself, have come together and started working with the National Association on a potential issue mobilization campaign. Um, part of this uh, proposal that was passed back in August is that a working group would form around the drafting of this ordinance. So far, no working group has formed, um, and we are watching that because we want to make sure we are at the table, whether it's a member of the working group or just being able to participate. But the focus of the county staff right now, all we understand, is really on completing their housing element process, and I think they're going to turn to um, uh, this TOPO ordinance maybe sometime in uh, December or after the first of the year, but we will be watching it. We were, were, are working with various, there's 19 associations within the LA County area um, that could possibly be involved in this. And um, I know the California Association is very concerned about this uh, ordinance too. So there will be a lot of emphasis on this in the months to come. So um, more information will be coming forth as it comes out. Also, um, as I mentioned, the South Bay Association is putting together, with the help of an NAR grant, its own curriculum on SB9 and SB10. So with that uh, program, I'm hoping to work with our education committee to bring that speaker and that curriculum in um, to our association members and maybe also offer that curriculum um, to our various local governments to see if they wouldn't be interested in um, a presentation on those um, ordinances, I'm sorry, on those laws as well, because there does seem to be some confusion and we wanna make sure to help get the word out about how positive those particular uh, new laws can be. Also a big issue for the National Association as well as here in California is implicit bias and diversity training. And one of the um, things that I learned uh, while I was back was about um, a book called The Color of Law that really has a great historical, um, is a great historical reference to how these issues have influenced uh, realtors and the, the National Association through the years. And uh, many associations in concert with the National Association are bringing in the author of this book, Richard Rothstein, to speak to their associations about um, his book, also um, offering the book to those folks who um, attend the discussion as well. And that is something that NAR would fund for us and it's something that I'm hoping to um, bring to our association for those who would like to learn more about um, those national issues. 
Um, also, another um, interest I know that members have been talking about is um, home hardening and defensible space and point of sale disclosures. The law is evolving in that area and phasing in about what has to be reported, uh, what has to be done to sale a property in high fire areas. And there's a lot to learn in that area. And I'm hoping to um, work with our education committee and bring in a good speaker on that. So I know there is definitely um, interest and, and concern about that. Also, um, I did want to bring um, to the association's attention, based on my research, right now, Monter both Monterey Park and I believe Alhambra are um, going through redistricting processes based on the census. So um, I think Alhambra started their first public workshops beginning of November and Monterey Park started at the end of October. Both of those communities will probably have a series of uh, three, four or five uh, workshops on uh, the redistricting of those particular communities. For those of you that are um, interested in those particular areas or work in those particular communities, you may find that of interest or wanna participate in those discussions. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, well, that brings me to the end of my presentation. Um, I want to thank you all and again, wish you a very happy Thanksgiving. And I'm wondering if there are any questions that I will do my best to answer, or if not, I'll definitely get back to you if I'm not able to answer on the spot. Sure. Karen, we do have several questions uh, from uh, Cecilia. You mentioned that the mixer uh, yes. that we'll be having in March, that will be include all our five city uh, as well as Temple City, right? Uh, yes, it will include it will include everyone. We reached out just so she knows. We reached out, um, Seal, to all of the um, all of the chambers, and the ones that I mentioned in my presentation are the ones who responded back right away and are working in a working group with us. Um, Temple City did not, but of course we will be inviting them. And um, if they want to come on board, I, we would love for them to. Yeah, we had this event uh, two years ago, and yes. Temple City came. It was an excellent event, uh, giving everyone the opportunity to uh, get to know our mayors or our yes. from the city. Yeah, so we're, we're looking. looking we're looking forward to it. Yeah, I was going to say definitely. Albert has shown me pictures and shared with me information from the February 2020 event, and I'm I'm excited to repeat that event. I think everyone will enjoy that. And a St. Patrick's Day theme should be very fun. <laughs> mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, next question from Frankie Ho. What do you think the rental housing market now between supply and demand? Um, I probably am. <laughs> I probably am not the best person to answer that, but I can just definitely tell you that um, it, all, all I heard about at the conference was how low supply is mm -hmm. and how desperate um, people are for um, whether it's a an affordable rental or affordable home that they can buy for their family. It, there's just not a lot of, um, there's not a lot of options on the market right now. And how hopefully the federal government wants to address that or help address it. it it's not a short-term fix, but to help address it with the Build Back Better Act, which would actually do something about affordable housing and building that, uh, that middle ground housing. Okay. Um, can you explain a little bit more for TOPA? Yeah, Tenant Opportunity Protection Acts. Um, what that is, is it would give tenants, if a property goes up for sale in a neighborhood, it would give tenants the opportunity to purchase that property first. So for the property owner who wants to get that property out on the market and sell it for whatever reason, it adds a whole nother layer and it could be a very lengthy layer to that process. And it would basically bind them uh, if, if, a, if a reasonable offer came forward to selling that property to tenants versus going out to the open market and seeing what they could really get for their particular uh, property. So there is a lot of concern um, about the extra layers of bureaucracy. There's a lot of concern about how much more time that could add to the process. 
because not all sellers have a lot of time. Sometimes there's extenuating cir um, circumstances. People need to get out of properties, whether there's been a death in the family, there's a divorce situation. So there, there is a lot of concern amongst property owners. So we are definitely, um, we are definitely watching that. And as I've mentioned, I'm working with the National Association, the California Association, and local GADs. But again, there's a lot of GADs in, um, and a lot of associations in LA County. It's a very large area, 19 associations. We're hoping a lot of them are going to come on board with us and help. I don't want to say fight, but at least even if an ordinance has to pass, it's something that everybody can live with if it has to pass or that we are successful in defeating it. I'll, I'll keep you posted as it evolves. So right now it's pretty quiet. Sure. And Joanne asked, what, what is the main goal for, for the TOPA? Um, the main goal is that when a multifamily property sells, they a lot of times tenants are displaced and they want to offer those tenants the opportunity to actually own property. I mean, the, the thought behind it is good. I mean, it's, it's a good intent. It's just the way that they're talking about implementing it could be potentially disastrous to property owners who are trying to sell. Um, there's other ways to get tenants into properties um, other than um, the tenant's opportunity to purchase act, so. Okay, thank you. One more question for me, Karen. Yes. <laughs> I think you mentioned the South Bay had the grant for the SB9. Yes. Uh, we as an association also would like to see what kind of information we can um, you know, find out. And I'm sure we would like to apply for those grants as well. And um, I'm sure we will have um, someone to talk to you about. Uh, yes, well, in, and just so you know, Sean, um, South Bay is developing a uh, curriculum to be used by all associations in Southern California. They got the grant, they're developing it, and um, it will be something I will absolutely be able to bring to our association. And uh, as I mentioned too, um, we can do an educational class and just focus on that. And we're also going to do an abbreviated educational class before our mixer, because it is an area where we're getting a lot of questions and we want to bring clarity as soon as possible. Definitely. Well, thank you so much for all the uh, information. And on behalf of the West Singapore Valley Realtors, we would like to thank Ms. Herrera for your very informative uh, presentation. You're welcome. Thank you so much for having me this morning, you guys. Have a happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. So now we move to the attendance drawing. Please type your DRE member name and email in the chat box. Okay. Okay, we're gonna have the wheel up, okay. Congratulations, Earl. Is he here? No. You can, oh. a, you can A all you want, but he's not here. <laughs> Too bad, Earl. Next one then. Our next one, John Strickman. John Shipman is not here. Oh, um, darn. Okay. We will try our third time. Okay. Ian Bird, is she here? She is here. Oh. Congratulations, yeah. Ian. Make sure you type your email, okay, Ian? <laughs> And your DRC number. Thank you. I'm here. <laughs> Congratulations. Thanks. Okay. Now we have two more. Mm. 
I'm going to need help with that last name. When so we uh, not Jenny? here. She usually is here? here, but she's not here today. Okay. Sorry, Jane. Second drawing. Uh, no, Chloe, you always win. Judy Chow, congratulations, Judy. Judy, she's here. Yeah. You know, this, ma this music is a, a little bit loud. <laughs> oh, the music a little too loud? You guys can dance with it. <laughs> I like the music. <laughs> <laughs> Judy, are you here? Uh, Yin, we need your email address in the chat box, please. Ju Judy, I, we know you're here, but can you acknowledge that, please? Oh, there she goes. Okay, let's go. Last one. Congratulations. Last one. Okay, uh, last drawing. Yeah, wow. Mel is here. Mel, Mel is, is he here. here today? Yes, he is. Mel, Congratulations, Mel. Can we acknowledge you here? He won the uh, i the iPhone. No, not iPhone. The iWatch at NAR as well. Always with something. He can always donate that iWatch. <laughs> Mel, Mel, are you here? Are you on a radio mode for us? Mel. Mel? Give him a, uh -oh. a second. You here? No. Let's see. Mel, Mel Wong once. Come on, Mel. Mel Wong twice. Twice. Mel Sorry, Mel. Wong three times. Three times. Radio no, mode. No. Sorry. Okay, let's do the last one. Judy, we know he's on, but you had the knowledge. Of Brian Dad, Bert Peg. Is she here? No. no. Okay, one more time. Joan? Joan who? Joan? This Joan person is here, but I don't know who this Joan person is. Joan? Joan? This is Joan Fan. Oh, okay. Joan, you have to put your last name next. <laughs> okay. okay. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations, Joan. Okay, thank we you. We need your email address in the chat box. Okay. 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 Congratulations for all the winners today. Um, now we move to our education classes. Okay, please join our education classes. First one is 45 hours DRE license renewal continuing education. It is $85 November uh, 19, which is uh, this Friday at one o'clock to 4 p.m. Our virtual zip form plus training I'm sorry, I missed the 2021 Code of Ethics training, Friday as well, uh, 1 to 4 p.m. I'm so sorry, let, let me repeat this. The 45 hours DRE license renewal is 9.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. And then continuing with the 2021 Code of Ethics training will be 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Okay, these two are same day. And then the next one, virtual zip form plus training will be on Monday, November 22nd, 9.30 to 12.30 p.m. The CRMLS virtual training, Realtors Property Resource, which is on a Wednesday, November 23rd, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. One hour, it's free. Okay. That will be all our education classes for November. 
Now you still have time to make reservations for our de December 2nd, the breakfast meeting honoring outgoing President Mindy A. Both breakfasts will be served and RSVP is a must. So please uh, contact the association to make reservation if you are available. Okay, and of course, don't miss our Centennial Installation Gala on Friday, December 3rd at the Sheraton San Gabriel. Purchase your ticket today. Joe Singer, CEO of CAR, will be our special guest and installing officer. Come hear what he has to say before he retires. Okay, the West uh, WSGVR office will be closed next week in observance of the Thanksgiving holiday. On behalf of the board of directors, we wish our fellow realtors and WSVR, uh, v, WSGVR family a happy Thanksgiving. I am thankful to be here and grateful to be part of the Western Global Valley Realtors. And I also want to um, thankful Lane Chow um, to be managed for the MLS. Behind the scene, she has done so much for the past two years, making sure all our meetings are on time. We have our interesting speakers that line up for the past two years. Lots of information. It's, it's been a, a tough two years with the Zoom and everything, but she been, been uh, doing a great job. I wanna thank her for all the behind the scene work. Okay. Thank you, and thank you, Sean. There will be a no breakfast meeting next week. So again, have a happy Thanksgiving, everyone. See you on December 2nd. Okay, make sure to visit our website, www.wsgvar.com for all your real estate needs. This meeting is now adjourned. Thank you, everyone.